Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Let's Go Brandon Green. Today we have on the show Victoria Cure, if that is your real name, Victoria, is that how you pronounce it? Victoria Cure. You were very You're close. Very good. Pretty close. I've never seen that one before, so yeah. And um, Victoria's from Georgia and she runs a domestic violence uh, group that she's set up. Like, what, what is it? And it's called a, ca- a Contagious Smile. It is. It's called A Contagious Smile. It, it, it started out almost two decades ago with uh, myself advocating for some, uh, survivors of domestic violence, as well as special needs families and children. And the platform just got small and I needed to make it bigger. So A Contagious Smile uh, website, acontagiousmile.com, actually offers free support groups, free social classes. It also has lots of resources on there and uh, gives people a place that's safe and bully and judgment free to come and get help that they need. And how did you start this out 20 years ago before the internet and things like, like was really kicking off? Well, it was close to 20 years ago. Um, I started out doing everything in person. I've recently moved the platform larger um, and, and did the website. I am a survivor of domestic violence and I am disabled now myself. And so I started helping others with resources that I didn't know existed at the time. Okay. Such as what were they? Like, for instance, uh, a lot of people return to their abusers on average seven times because they don't have a structured uh, uh, evacuation plan so that they can get out and stay gone. So a lot of times it's not, they don't have everything ready and they end up going back because they have nowhere else to go. So I can help people kind of put that together Um there is on the website, I would like to get more so that we can get um, information for countries outside of the U.S. But right now I have a moving company for every state in the U.S. that will move a victim and their family for free. I have the coalition for every state on the website. Um, I have lots of other resources. For instance, I was never um, in the whereabouts of knowing exactly the protocol and order of doing certain things, you know, like getting a TPO, getting a restraining order, those kinds of things and how you go about doing that. And so this is really kind of um, so outlined for you. So you're saying that if you are a, a woman and you're experiencing a domestic violence, domestic, domestic assault regularly, and you don't think you can leave, you don't have the funds to leave, you you just got no one else, you can, there's organisations out there that will actually help fund you and remove you from the situation. There's shelters out there that you can go to. There are organisations that we help get you in touch with that can help you start learning a new job, a new trait, um, help you get back on your feet again. Right. And um, do a lot of people know about this happening? Um, you mean, do they know about this? my site? I'm trying to get that out there more. Um, yeah. They don't know where to go. They don't know where it's safe to go. Uh, yeah, that's, that's time, my question, yeah. So they don't, yeah. they don't know that there's an answer. Right. They feel very alone. They're not sure where to go, who to turn to. Because their attacker, their abuser has such control over them isolates them from their friends and family. Uh, They check their social history. They check uh, their whereabouts at all times, their phone calls. If you go and look at our website, when you first pull it up, it actually looks for the special needs section. So you really don't see that it's about domestic violence until you scroll down further. So God forbid. What do you mean by um, special needs? Like, yeah. Um, Any kind of... Medical, I don't like the word disabled because I don't think any of us are disabled, but anybody who has uh, a medical obstacle they're uh, dealing with, um, anybody who is going through life with some sort of medical situation, uh, you know, from autism to having a tracheostomy to anything in that realm that you just need support and you have a caregiver or you don't have a caregiver, 
it's somewhere you go and you can be accepted. Right. And um, so what, when did you make the website a contagious smile, uh, dot com? Within a year ago. Oh yeah. And then you, so you're just broadening out to, I guess COVID would have brought that on a bit as well. And yeah, that's correct. Yeah. All right. And, uh, you've got other people in the team there. I do. I do. Yeah. We have, um, we're adding more and more to it. Uh, I have doctors and therapists that are a phone call away if I need them. Um, we have a, a retired canine handler who is law enforcement, who's also there. We, uh, who also teaches safety for the women as well. Um, we have other different therapists that have offered to come on and teach certain things and we teach different classes. Yeah. Um, so is it hard to like, if you base primar primarily in, um, Georgia there, is it hard to get out to the other States and get them, get people on board? elsewhere or no because we're doing it all virtually yeah at this point so you're pretty and confident that anyone can who is experiencing a, a terrible relationship where they're getting beaten or i don't know i believe it takes many forms of a, abuse under the domestic violence um category fortunately i've got nothing to do with it so i don't know a whole lot about it but um you, you definitely read about it hear about it oftentimes too late when the guys killed them you know you or, you know all the red flags and that so do you also promote yeah the red flags like these are reasons why help, you should like, live. i try to bring awareness to those red flags because a lot of women don't see them or men because men do get abused. Um, it, it does happen. So I try to bring awareness because those individuals come out. They're so charismatic and charming and they find what you're missing in your life. And then they try to provide that for you and lure you in. And then they try so hard to get you to just expedite a relationship with them. And they're so needy, but they need you all the time. And they just try to make you feel like you're everything. And then once they've got you, that's when you really start seeing who they really are. And you know, all this firsthand, this is why you help set this up. This is, this is the reason why you set this up. That is correct. Yeah. And um, how long ago was that that you experienced all this? 20 years ago when, when you set all um, this up? Almost 20 years ago. I, yeah. I went through a horrifically abusive marriage, and I have had an unbelievable amount of surgeries to correct the damage that she caused. And I am partially paralyzed. I'm deaf, and I have hearing aids now. Um, if you see here, I've got scars both sides of my face. This is all metal. Mm. in my face um well wow. so yeah i i went through it first hand so your face is like metal yes as is my shoulder and my foot and my fingers are all metal i um screws and pins and yeah well you must have been oh, that's a uh, yeah incredible um Right. And this, how many, do you know the stats on like how many, um, relationships are like what you were going through or not, not as bad as yours, but still horrific. Yours sounds like yours is one of those ones that usually get out of control. It sounds, um, it definitely did. yeah, you um, escape with your life. In America, the statistics are one in three. Uh, are in a domestic violence situation and the numbers are higher when it involves military or law enforcement. But, you know, Brandon, I ask you if the statistics are one in three and that's reported, what isn't reported? What one in three? Are... Yes. One in three, what the house is nuclear families are no good. So say you have four women standing with you, one, or three women standing with you, I apologize, one of three of those women in their life will experience some sort of a domestic violence. Yeah, right. And um, how old were you when this was taking place? Because you, you don't look that old. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I was, 
in my late twenties. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, right. So, but it can happen from any age, teenagers even. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And does it become worse? A lot of the time, does it become worse, or how many times is it more like, oh, this is as bad as it's going to get, versus this is just getting worse to the point where it's. They go through a pattern and they go through a a section of phases. And in the beginning, that's the charismatic, charming person. Then they get to the, why did you make me do that? If you had just done what I said, this wouldn't have happened. Then they get into like, they just go around and around in circles. Um, It starts out not as aggressive and it just escalates and gets more and more aggressive. It gets incredibly aggressive when the victim tries to leave that's when it's at its most heightened right um and i've I've heard that a lot of people um they want to leave but they're more scared of being alone that's true to a small degree i think more people are they're torn down brandon so badly to like ground zero. They, they feel that they aren't worth loving, that they aren't deserving of love. They have no self-worth. They have no self-esteem because it's been taken from them. If you hear something so much every single day, you begin to believe it. And they don't feel like they're going to have the support. They don't feel like they're ever going to amount to anything or anybody's ever going to want them again. So they just feel like they're better off just to be better the devil you know kind of thing, like just stay. Well, When I talk to women like that, I ask them if they have children, would would they be okay if their daughter was in that situation and the boyfriend of their daughter was doing that to them? Or, you know, the fact that their son is seeing that that's okay for a man to treat a woman that way. Um, If if the woman at this point doesn't believe that she's worth it, do her kids in her eyes, are they worth it? Because they are. And these kids need to realize that this behavior is not okay. It is not acceptable for their mother to be treated this way. But it becomes normal to them. So how many of these abusers, male abusers, seen their dad abuse their mom in that way so it's just how it is? Well, like I said, that statistic I don't have. I do know that most of the families that I have talked and tried to help if they do have children, the children do believe that that behavior is normal. They find it just like being punished as if they've done something wrong because, you know, when they get in trouble, they get time out or anything like that. And it's explained to them the same way. And that's how the pattern continues. That's why you need to stop the cycle. Now I realize that I was, my daughter will tell you, she's never gotten spanked. She's never been screamed at. I was never going to let this cycle go to the next generation. It just was not going to happen. Oh, so you never like hit you hit your daughter or anything? Never. Really? Um, what about? Do you have a son? No. Uh, well, yes. Now I I have a uh, stepson. Oh, stepson. Yeah, right. Because like I've got a toddler, and he, I wouldn't know. He's so aggressive that I don't know how. He's so dumb too that cannot. He's not dumb. He's not smart, I'll tell you that. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Is there a way for me to raise him without hitting him? Give me an example of something that he has done so we can kind of get a better understanding. Okay, he always goes into the fridge, like, nonstop to open the milk up and spill it everywhere. And he must do this over 10, 15, 20 times a day, like, he just doesn't well, get it. He's just started he? to do it. What's that? How old is he? He must be 20 months now. Well, then you take him by the hand and say no, and then you take him to go into timeout, find a designated area you put him in timeout for, sit there and say you cannot go there unless daddy, mommy take you to the fridge or you ask for something in the fridge. Leave him there for about a minute and a half because he's so young. And then you praise him when he comes. I'm so proud of you. You sat there like such a good boy. And then say, do you want some juice? Do you want something to drink? And then you take him and let him have something. And then do it over and over. And the repetitiveness will make it where he won't go over there and do it without asking you guys. 
All right. Well, I'll tr- I'll try that way if it's any beneficial. But um, let me know if it works for you. Yeah, because at the moment I just count down one, two, three. You get a smack. And he understands that a bit, and then he thinks twice. But and then you give him a little smack. You give him a little on on his um on his thigh, and then he. But yeah, but the thing is, he's so. So I don't even think he understands what a smack is sometimes, you know. But yeah, he's starting he. Because he's just tough, he giggles. So any, you don't want to do it too hard and hurt him. You just want him to realise that like, you don't do it. But so you don't do that. You think you just I've don't. absolutely never ever put my hands on my child or my other children okay. in any way like that at all. It's not like never. I'm hurting him, am I? Just right, right, I get it. It's just I've never, I've never done that. Were you ever smacked as a as a as a kid? No. Really. No. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. So I'll try your um your your way because yeah, I'm open to ideas, and it's not like I flog him or just one little. Smack. It's it's positive praise. It's you know, would you rather always have something negative, or would you rather you know be something positive and rewarding? And you know, my my the daughter is special needs, and literally she'll come on and tell you that. Mommy's never screamed at me. Mommy's never yelled at me because I've told her, I said, the one thing you need to remember is so many times that down the road, you can't take back what you said and those words stay with you forever. And so from day one, I've always said, okay, everybody gets frustrated. Everybody gets mad. It's part of life. So instead you think about what you want to say before you say it. Um, You know, are you supposed to go in there? No. Did you spill the milk? Probably. Okay. Well, help me clean it up because now there's a mess. And we might not have milk for dinner tonight, so you might have to have water or juice or whatever. And I know you want milk, but you should have thought about that before you went in there. And especially because he's so young, it's the shorter sentence. He's so young, he can't help me clean it up. There's no alternative. (laughs) You can help. You give him a couple of paper towels and tell him to blot it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I understand. So, So even that activity that I'm doing there is abusive and it shouldn't be done. I didn't say it was abusive. I mean, that's, you know. People Some people say, I've heard people say that. you're abusing kids by hitting them and that, like. Well, I would have to know more about before. I'm not going to accuse you of being an abusive person without ha- having more information. I'm just not going to jump to that conclusion. Well, that's but, pretty much it. I mean, they get a, he gets a smack if he does bad stuff repetitively. Does he bruise from it? No way. It's a, like. He knows okay, well, I mean, smart. you're telling me, is it abuse? I don't know. I have to ask questions in order to make, an, you know, a, a smart decision on whether or not if it you're, would be abuse. I would say if anyone's doing it and bruising a toddler, man, that's crazy. But, yeah, I don't want to be, yeah. But I always got hit as a kid. All my friends did, and we don't care. But then I've heard of others saying, don't ever hit you. I used to get hit as a kid, and it's the worst thing ever. And somehow they hated it, and we don't mind it one bit. So something's gone on there. Um, but yeah, and that does that ever come? And that also, I guess, because I believe I deserved it, right? And that also comes down to some victims of um, domestic violence. They can be battered up to the point where even you did, and then they say, I be- "I've heard them say, yeah, I, but I deserve that." And is that, but no one deserves that, you know what I mean? No toddler deserves a bruise. Um, right, it's the same. It's the same thing. So, were you. No woman deserves a bruise either. Correct. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. No one deserves right. a, a bruise and no one deserves. Yeah. You shouldn't be hitting. Women, men should be able to control themselves and be strong and emotionally in their own, within themselves, you know. Um, and it's crazy to think that, you know, 33% that you said probably aren't and losing their stuff at, at their female partner. But um, well, it's also men losing their stuff by a female abuser. It's both sides. Female men abuse? Are being abused. There so, are women that beat their men. Like punch them. <laughs> yes. But wouldn't they be like overpowered if they tried that? Absolutely not. Women are trained. They can overpower a man if they're trained, right? Really? I guess if Absolutely. 
She's six foot six and he's five. She could be five foot one. It's all about what <laughs> she knows and how to do it. Yeah, right. Well, maybe. Then definitely not as strong as a man. But yeah, in one or two percent. Um, but yeah, I understand. But yeah, right. So, so you do get, so you really do get men inquiring about um, abuse. Absolutely, and they have been through it. They come in with proof that they've been abused. They have no self esteem. They have no self worth. They have, they can't look you in the eye. Um, they're very insecure on who they are. It's it's very. I mean, the whole situation, male, female the whole pronoun thing that's going on in the world today, it's unbelievably sad and it's unacceptable that people are hurting one another. What are your pronouns? I'm straight. So I guess I'm a she, her. I'm a they, them. What exactly is a they, them? I'm still trying to learn them all. I, I don't know, but it sounds cool. Um, Because, you know, there's like a he, she, and a... Well, that's normal, he, she, and then they, them. No, for one person. One person can be a he, she. Oh, really? I thought he, she was me and you. That's what I used to think. But, like, you know... I don't know. I just see you choose your pronouns, they, them, he, she. Right. I'm trying to learn because, like, so many kids that I've talked with, they're like, oh, I am he, her. It must be something... I want to know what they're talking about. Well, it's because of their sexuality that they might be bisexual or they're not sure they're binary or, and I'm trying to learn all these. Yeah. I guess. So I'm trying to learn. Why does this all exist now? Even five years ago, it wasn't even a thing. Now (laughs) it's just, so you're dealing with this. Right. So when someone comes to me and I'm not sure because they dress, you know, very generically and, they might be of an age where you're not really sure by the voice. You kind of say, you know, how would you like me to call you? Or what name would you like me to call you? And they're like, they, them. Or, you know, we're not, you know, sure where we are. Are we transitioning? Yeah. And, and I'm trying to learn about it because in our era, we didn't have any of that. So it's very, very new. It's well, very confusing for me. Than me. And I, it's not in my era either. <laughs> it's just something that I'm, I've seen pop up on it. the internet. But broken houses lead to, I guess, these non, no self esteem young people that you know. That's it's what it appears like to me. Something's gone on somewhere. Um, all right, and you've also got a podcast out. I will be putting mine um, up here soon. I've been more doing the advocate thing, so it will be coming up here very soon. Yeah. Do you have a name for it yet? A contagious smile. A contagious smile. Oh, that's that's good, and it's on on your brand as well. Um, yes. All right. So, where can people um, reach out to you at Victoria? Because you do have that. I guess you're a bit of a coach. Would you say as well, like in helping the people? Motivational coach. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I I've been through lots of classes and trainings and things like that to to be able to, to help um, on several different levels, even professionally to help kind of guide somebody into a new profession. Uh, Facebook, you go to a Contagious Smile, you can answer a few questions. We vet everybody who comes in to make sure that they are legitimate. Um, and then we have that Facebook group. We're on YouTube for a Contagious Smile. Instagram is still a Contagious Smile and um, our website at a acontagioussmile.com. All right, well, that's good. Well, I hope you do continue to put smiles on everyone's faces, whether they be a he, she, they, them, or whatever is new next week. And, um, yeah, best of luck with the podcast. I'll put a link out to Victoria's website uh, on my website, her website, acontagioussmile.com. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure a lot of there will be a lot of – sounds like 33% of households will be tuning in discreetly to that uh, podcast. Also, one more question. When they do decide to leave or they're being pressured against by their friends and family, like, you need to leave this guy, like, uh, do they try to seek help discreetly? Like, obviously it would be discreetly, but, like, at what lengths do they go to try to hide this and 
And is the evacuation like a big SWAT exercise, like go, 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 like now's the time? Well, if you get a, a restraining order, then a lot of times that you'll be ordered and the officers can come out and be there with you while you collect your belongings from where you're domicile at that point. Um, it depends on, so really on an individual basis, Brandon, because it depends on where they are uh, with the entire situation as to what they're ready for. You never want to push them, but you want them to know that they are there and that you're not alone and that they have help and they have support. So you, you kind of explain that they can go and get help. There are things that they can do to protect themselves and the, and the children. And then, you know, I highly recommend going to a professional for therapy because they need it. They need to know that this absolutely is not their fault. Nothing they did warranted having hands put on them in a negative manner. I don't care. People say, well, they made him mad. If they had just done what they were supposed to, this wouldn't have happened. That's mm -hmm. not true. If you do everything by the book of what he wants, something that set him off is going to make him come home and do it to you. It has, I mean, you can't be perfect. Nobody's perfect. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. But I'm telling you that when that individual comes in and has had a bad day, he's going to take it out on the victim. And it's just something that's unavoidable. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Well, yeah, it sounds like, you know, obviously, you know, firsthand as well. So that's why you, you have all the answers for someone like me who knows nothing about it <laughs> at all. Um, but yeah, it's been interesting talking to you and, uh, I can see how you would be able to help a lot of people have done and will continue to do so. And it's great that you got the website out there. It's good. It's big. So you'll get a lot of people hitting that, hitting that up all around America and the, and the world too, perhaps. So especially with your podcast. So, um, yeah. And you're invited back on any time as well. Uh, Thank in, you, Brandon. Let me know how it works with your son. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He'll come online in the next year or so, I guess, and I'll be able to tell him, don't do it. Yeah, but, yeah, we'll see how it goes. All right, then, Victoria, you have a great night over there. You do the same. Thanks, Brandon. See ya. Bye.